Hey everybody, today I want to talk about pH and carbonate hardness. Now I'm not going to be giving you any hard and fast explanations of how all this kind of stuff works. I always feel like I'm getting a little bit out of my depth when I start talking about pH anyway. But we are going to talk about it because the subject has come up for me recently. I was looking into the CO2 levels in some various water sources and in order to calculate that you need to know what the pH is and you need to know what the carbonate hardness is. And now I have an API carbonate hardness test kit and I have no reason to believe that that's an inaccurate uh, test kit. But I have always had reasons to suspect my pH meters have never really given me accurate readings. I've always gotten the cheap $15 or $20 um, pH meters and as I've been reading about them it turns out they're adequate pH meters but you pretty much have to calibrate them after every use unless you use them on a really really regular basis and even then you've got to calibrate them very very frequently. If you let them sit for a while between uses those little cheap ones pretty much have to be recalibrated all the time. And that would explain why I always seem to get wacky numbers whenever I use that. They never seem to match up with what my little test vial showed um, and a few other issues I always had with those um, pH meters. So recently I got some test solution and I got some calibrating solution and all that so we could do some control tests on it. And it turns out that my pH meter is really just going screwy off the charts. I cannot get it to calibrate. It does not work right. So I'm looking into buying a more expensive uh, more reliable pH meter, uh, but again, this is all just sort of academic and out of curiosity. The thing that's piqued my interest, if I ever get around to it, is the carbonate hardness. When I was reading into this stuff and looking into the relationship between the CO2 and the pH and the carbonate hardness, and it gets really complicated, at least for me, um, one of the things that kept coming up was how you can't have a stable tank or a stable pH if your carbonate hardness is below 5. Now my carbonate hardness in the tanks that are the hardest I've ever measured the carbonate hardness is 4 in any of my tanks. Typically it's around 2 and in this tank, my waterfall tank here, it's 0. And I was trying to figure out why I had 0 carbonate hardness in this tank. And again, I don't really understand all the chemistry behind you know carbonates and how they you know bicarbonates and carbonates and all that kind of stuff again I never took chemistry and I'm not pretending to fully understand any of this stuff but this tank has no carbonate hardness at all and what I found out was this tank gets topped off with my groundwater all the time I run um, I bypass my water system and run water right out of the ground, assuming it's got a little bit more mineralization in it than it does once it goes through my water system, where it comes out the other end with virtually nothing but sodium in it. And what I found was my groundwater has zero degrees carbonate hardness, but my tap water has two degrees carbonate hardness. So I am putting some carbonate hardness in my water as it goes through the system. And again, I'm also putting sodium ions in there. Not a ton, but I am putting sodium ions in there. And the sodium will also buffer your pH. It's not as effective as carbonates, but sodium will help buffer your pH. And that's what it brings me back around to. I've got a tank here with no carbonate hardness, and I've got other tanks that have two or three degrees carbonate hardness. And yet, as far as I can tell, I have fairly stable pH. I don't necessarily need the pH meter for the sake of figuring out what my CO2 levels are. That's just something I want to do out of curiosity. But with somebody that's got uh, soft acidic water, and I know I've got extremely low carbonate hardness, and really the only thing I've got buffering my uh, tanks is the sodium that's in there, I really try to keep not a super close eye on my pH, but I do keep an eye on my pH. I do keep an eye on the pH of the water that I'm putting in the tanks a lot of times because I do really big water changes. And if you've got a couple of degree difference in pH, that can be significant if you're doing a 50% water change. And so I really do need to get a reliable pH meter. And so that will be the next step, I suppose. But I'm curious as to what anybody else's experience is when it comes to carbonate hardness. Do you have tanks that are soft, acidic, do you have very low carbonate hardness, and do you have a stable pH? The best I can tell is the pH in this tank is probably around 6.5, maybe 
Uh, that was the reading I was getting before my meter went crazy. Um, I did use the litmus paper on this, but again, I got some funny readings with the litmus paper too. The litmus paper shows this tank at about 7. So it's probably not that high considering the water that comes out of my tap is only at the most 7.3 and then you know the pH is just going to fall from there as nitrates build up and as CO2 gets incorporated into the water uh, all these things will bring your pH down over time unless of course you've got plenty of carbonate hardness that buffers your um, pH. Um, a lot of people I've gathered over the years tend to believe that a buffer it's something that raises your pH and you buffer your water and it brings your pH up to a certain level. And that's not what a buffer is at all. A buffer is, holds your pH stable. A buffer means that it resists a pH shift. So if you've got a pH of six and a half and your tank is well buffered, it's going to want to stay at six and a half. It's not going to fluctuate around. And that's what the carbonate hardness is supposed to do. It's supposed to buffer your tank. It's supposed to keep it where it is. Now typically the more carbonate hardness you have the higher your pH is going to be but the buffering aspect of it is not the raising of the pH it's the stabilization of the pH. So I've got sodium in there as I said and that acts as a buffer that does sort of help to hold the pH where it is but it's not nearly as effective as the uh, carbonates and again the amount of sodium I have is trivial it's it's not you know it doesn't even come close to the amount of sodium that I would have in there if I put uh, one teaspoon of salt in there it's about 200 parts per million maybe 250 parts per million whereas a teaspoon of uh, aquarium salt will give you about 1500 parts per million sodium in your tank so you can put some significant amount of sodium in your tank if you've got low carbonate hardness I guess that's an idea that's come out of this video now that I'm thinking about it uh, if you do have pH that's shifting around a little bit try to put a little sodium chloride in there and see if the sodium doesn't help buffer your pH and stabilize it anyway again that's you know just my thoughts on this I'm going to wait and see what happens when I get a new pH meter and we will find out what's going on with some of my tanks just part of the ongoing everyday you know routine stuff I've got going on in my fish room here so again, leave your comments down below. I'd like to hear what's going on with your tank and whether or not you've got uh, soft acidic water and how you keep your pH stable, uh, so on and so forth. You know the routine. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that one. Don't forget this one here is my 40-gallon waterfall tank. Thanks again. I'll see you real soon. Nice.